Welcome everyone. It is in the weeds. I should probably remove that graphic. There we go. That's what happens when Joel's not here. I always mess that up. I'm so not used to doing it. I'm just not used to it. It's Friday. It's April 12th. I'm Jeremy Lambert, joined by SP3. Joel is, I don't know, just doesn't show up to work. Just, you know, not here as typical. We appreciate you joining us today. SP3, thank you for filling in as always. How you doing, buddy? I am very happy to be here back in the wheeze with my good friend, Jeremy Lambert, the only person who has ever made me go to Ohio just to see him be happy and have a better half. So I am here to be his better half in the weeds today. How are y'all doing? Uh, uh, I'm doing well. I apologize for finishers asking about X-Men. Don't spoil X-Men, okay? I've not watched Oh my watched God, it it's so yet. good. Oh, what I've is seen wrong people... with y'all? It's been a month. No, I'm not. That's this is me calling all of y'all out. I know a lot of people. No, I've not seen the, the new episode. I'm I'm caught up. I'm I okay. just haven't watched the latest episode. I've seen everything up okay. until the, what the episodes come out on Wednesday, right? Yes. Yeah, I've not seen the 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 latest episode. I've seen everything up until then, though. It's so it's so so good. I agree with that. But I've not this seen week's the new episode. episode. Is the best one. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. I just I've not had a chance. I didn't have a chance on wednesday night to watch it and then last night i actually tried to like get some sleep for once in my life so i didn't get a chance to watch it last night i you know i will hopefully i, I know it's been a busy um, couple of days right yes it has it has uh yeah it's it's been a it's been a busy week honestly really of course it's coming off of wrestlemania and then you get you get uh yeah. what happened on wednesday it's like it's like damn there's no rest there's no rest, and I knew Japan's got a big show tonight for me. So, like, yeah, never no rest in this wrestling wrestling game that we play. But I'm glad to be here in the Wii's. Thank y'all for joining us today. Drop a like on the video, share the video with all your friends, and here is the man, the myth, the legend, the tallest man in the room, and the biggest penis in a wrestling locker room since Dave Batista. Strong yeah, that, that one is accurate. Uh, we're Share Delaware. I got some things to say. <laughs> I don't know. I can send her the link. I got a promo to cut. A um, promo to cut. Huge news. I, I, I love that I know when I see Sean again, he's going to say that same thing to me. Yes. Which... <laughs> she at? So huge news. Uh, anybody that thinks that running the footage was a bad idea is stupid. And I'll I'll tell you why. Because the numbers are there. And it outdrew WrestleMania night two in our post show review by 2000 views. Really? It did. And so I'm looking at it setting at 40,000 views right now. WrestleMania night two did 37,000. Now uh, we get a lot of views on like X and stuff like that. And not just the scroll by numbers, the analytics that I get as well. I'm pretty sure Mania night two probably beaten it there, but Still, I, I did not ever expect 40,000 views on an AEW review under any situation again. So listen, <laughs> I love this. It got views, <laughs> but it <at> what cost? <laughs> listen, I don't know if that's serious or uh, a troll tweet or like over being over dramatic, but I still love it. Like, I just, I just don't think that anybody's really going to be talking about this after Dynasty. And I'm like, I don't that's think how so I either. always felt. I was just like, whatever is it petty yes but i think that's also the side that ftr played off of in it is the this is petty this is stupid why are we doing this and i, I can say that i don't know that i've laughed as hard as the young bucks blaming ftr to keep them from preying on it that sh that, that was great I was like, I was like, the only thing that was missing is they should have had the Bucks do commentary over the footage. I'm no, sorry, I, that's the only thing that was missing here for me. And I felt like the segment did kind of, kind of went down a bit when they played the footage with nothing. I was like, I want to hear the Bucks talk about, yeah, we were about to pray at this point, and then we hear our poor friend yeah. Jack Perry being attacked by FTR's friend, and like yes. it, it, that would have made it even more entertaining for me. I added audio to the footage. I, it didn't get any engagement, unfortunately, but I added audio to the footage. This would pop both of you, by the way. I don't know if you saw it. I'm going to put my own clip over. I added audio to the footage. If you go to my 
X account. I yeah. wish I could put it on here, but it's so funny because people are like, "Why would they copyright claim it?" They're trying to pop a number for their TV show. That that's the funniest thing. I see accounts. I don't want to name names, but there are accounts who believe that every content that gets published belongs to them after that. And I'm like, it's it doesn't work that way. Is it often inconvenient for me or fightful or whatever? Yeah, of course. But just because something airs on TV doesn't mean you own it and can disseminate it in any manner in which you want. Um, but I'm, I'm just like, it is such less like a non thing for me. I was just like, eh. Well, we're going to talk about it for two hours. So it's going to be a non thing that we discuss for two hours. Why well, I saw, well, it was not the <laughs> Benny Hill theme. It was, it's on my account. I'll yeah. spoil it, but everyone should go watch it. It is the... Dylon, a rum pum, a rum pum, a ring a ting ting, a ring a ting ting. You too close. And right when Punk shoves him, you're too close, man. I, I said, I think is very I, good. I actually commented that to Cam Hawkins. I was like, imagine Punk uh, trying to coach uh, Dylon in the studio. You're too close, man. You're too it's close. good. I, I did a very good edit. No engagement on it, though. People, engagement's stupid. stupid. I just want to say, Punk maybe understated how close those two were backstage because Chael Sonnen had a lot more room in the don't, yes. don't let you get close to me thing. You're too close. Can't let you get close. close. Like <laughs> Punk and Perry were on top of each other pretty much the whole time too. So I can kind of see that. At that angle, it is hard to tell. Like I don't know. They were how, nose to nose. Like Punk close, almost yeah. headbutts them when he gets yeah. uh, when they first walk up to each other. I'd never do that. <laughs> never yeah. never headbutt anybody there's no, there's no proof of that there's no, no proof of that can we hear that footage do we have that not. footage <laughs> there is no footage of it thank god <laughs> my my only thing is that i i've seen a lot of people compare it to like wcw in like 1999 2000 oh and oh, i'm like I'm, people... like I'm like you didn't even live through that if yeah. you're saying that this is more though it felt more like tna though it felt like very TNA ish, and I, that's not what I wanted for AEW. I think that I think that there's no kind of chance of them dropping down from second position right now. And I feel like Tony Khan and this is, and the way their roster is is just one of the all time best rosters. But it's just you don't want that type of perception, and the perception thing was going back and forth anyway. And you didn't even have to make a response, but the show felt so centered on a reaction than having a good show. And felt it felt like it was having a reaction for the sake of a good show at a lot of times. And that was like, ah, this is not what you wanted. If you're gonna get the rating for showing the footage, you want to put out the best show possible. A slapper, and they didn't do that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I there was the video that went around of 2019 WWE. I would have ra definitely rather watch this than 2019 WWE. That was yeah. awful television, too. Yeah, <laughs> it was really, really bad. And I mean, I watched the TNA stuff, the voodoo Ken Mafia, and them. Calling out Sean Mike. Listen, they were calling Sean Michaels Michael Hickenbottom. His employers don't call him Michael Hickenbottom. <laughs> they ruined that they angle. Were... They ruined that angle when Triple H hurt his leg, and they're like, "Triple H, heal your wheel, bro." It's like you got this blood feud going on that yeah. you're trying to sell this fight, and it's like, "Oh, he got hurt. Shit, never mind. We're actually yeah. friends." J Cole ass apology with the Voodoo Kid <laughs> Mafia out here. So yeah the people that I talked to were really bothered by the Osprey shots. And it's so funny, as I say this in an ET style hood, that the dumbass plausible deniability that is applied here mm -hmm. where people go, well, he never said his name. Hey, I, I hate to tell you guys, I watch a lot of investigation discovery. I don't need a body to prove my case here because I actually talked to WWE about all these people. Okada, they claim they never had talks with him. He says different. Hey, you know what? If we're to believe WWE, sure. Mercedes was about money outright told to me. Adam Copeland said he didn't want to be full-time. So he did, or no, 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 sorry. He said they didn't want him to be full-time. So it wasn't an issue of the grind for him. Osprey was very respectful in those negotiations and in the follow-up of it. And not only that, I mean, this guy's being respectful of, fucking alfred Kanawa on twitter if they can't tell this guy's in a good mood i don't know what to tell you like it's it, so yeah it was about will osprey it was a shot and 
he was not happy about that, but he was amped up to stand up for himself. And it was just, it was weird. And it's even weirder that people are like, well, you can't prove, buddy, it's Twitter. I ain't got to prove shit. I thought Osprey's response was just, congrats on having sex and the high paying job. Yeah. By the way, I'm going to murder you because I'm an assassin <laughs> with a machine gun. Yeah, I, <laughs> I was, was like, like, whoa, was dude. Like, that was very much attitude era. I, that's why I put out the tweet. I was like, I'll be honest. I prefer this over the edge of the, the Adam Copeland promo last week or even the Bucks with the Bucks segment. I, I like Copeland, this type of reaction. How do we know he Copeland, was talking about Triple H? He didn't say his name. <laughs> exactly. You guys are assuming a lot. You guys are assuming a lot here. You know, even though Triple H very much quoted something you all Osprey said. <laughs> he said it in an interview. He said that was the reason why he went to AEW over WWE. And I love that some people, well, yeah, he, no one, he never said Will Osprey. You guys are just assuming. And they spent time on TV to react to it. I was like, yeah, WCW, WWE did that all the time. That's what happens in a wrestling. I, I, I wrestling. love the healthy competition. I'm yeah. like, shit. By all, like the Triple H when I was like, Eh, whatever the CM Punk win, like, come on, let's be real. He was going to talk about that at some point. Yeah. Well, I, I can't believe people were surprised and I can't believe, pe believe people were surprised. It was Ariel. Cause of course, Ariel's going to ask about it. Like, do you guys think that it's a coincidence that Rhea Ripley was scheduled at four <laughs> after like, do you think Rhea Ripley just hanging out there for 60 to 90 minutes? There was two hours slotted for this interview. It's how formatting works. Rhea's just sitting back there. This is my brutality in the backstage of the MMA hour during Mania Week. So they got that stuff planned. And and listen, I think Ariel's good at what he does. I understand why AEW thinks he's taking shots and all that stuff. I don't like that they did an angle immediately after that, but whatever. Like I just and and people, yeah, people saying OMG Shivani, he hates this. Buddy, Shivani has lived through way worse than this. Way worse. I just, to me, it's not as big of a deal as people are making it. I don't, I don't know if I'm like, should they or should they have not? I, I like the angle around it, and I just think it was overblown. And the footage is exactly what, yeah. And somebody says, you keep saying, well, that's what WCW used to do. Where, where are they right now? I'll tell you where the fuck they are. They are a subsidiary of WWE in which still exists and used to run footage pre-taped of Jim Cornette practically reviewing WCW. This was months after Billionaire Ted. Uh, I can keep going if you'd like, uh, senior nerd. I, I can keep rocking with you. You want, me, you want me to run back that TNA quote that I just had? They're still around too. How about MLW, who not only is still around, they have probably made the most money of theirs by registering trademarks that used to exist to WWE and then reselling them to WWE. Co their whole, come on. Their whole World Titan Federation is a is a whole parody of WWE. It's one of their hottest things, too. <laughs> it's their, It was their hottest selling t-shirt. I, I agree with what SV3 said. The people who say WCW 2000, oh, they're like 20 years old. And they weren't even alive for WCW 2000. Look, personally, because I my personal taste in wrestling is different than everybody else, I love WCW 2000. I watched that both shit shows. was god I, I, awful, I absolutely awful. I watched both shows, and one of my favorite uh, Monday nights was the whole rebrand thing with the new blood. With oh, that's probably blood. like my that's most watched my television memories. episode in way too long. But yes. I loved it because it was god awful and like yeah this is hilarious to me. I don't want good wrestling. You can keep all that shit. Give me just the most awful stuff in the world. You're getting at least good matches and stuff on AEW still. Yeah, WCW 2000 took everything around it objectively pretty awful stuff. For me personally, loved it. But I, it's not I, even I'm close. looking at uncensored WCW 2000. There was one match out of 11 that went over nine minutes and it was oh yeah they were all those matches Ooh. like you can't find the match like on nitro that was over like eight minutes every match was yeah. so that's why i loved it good give me the promos and the nonsense that's what i'm here for i don't care about your 30 minute matches sorry good match four and a half stars four yeah. and a, whatever don't care about it the white the biggest bump your five star matches i i give agree with sp3 matches. the biggest miss was they didn't put a slapper of a show on 
They should have yeah. put on an all timer show that night, period. And they didn't do that. And that was the biggest miss, I thought. To me, this is just another petty talking point that will probably move past because of how much wrestling there is. I mean, even people in WWE about the punk stuff were trying to tell me they're like, man, we're glad he did it this week because at least by Saturday, Sunday, people aren't talking about it anymore. So I saw people say that I was downplaying it. Well, yeah, because I'm downplaying almost everything because everything gets overblown. It's not that. But then I got people that are like, oh, you want to make things as controversial as possible for the clicks. I promise I don't really give that much of a shit about that. Uh, I I just want people to be normal on the internet, I, which perhaps is asking too much. I do think there was a little bit of a disconnect between the Copeland promo where he was like, AW's sure. great, we have the best yeah. wrestlers, we're the best wrestle, and then you your big selling point for this show was, hey, watch this backstage fight footage for somebody who's not in the company anymore and, that has nothing it, to do with wrestling. And it resulted in the live crowd kind of baby facing another company star. Oh, they with chanted the, CM Punk yeah. during that yeah. segment. That so, was so that that's when yeah. that's when you know that the segment did not work. Like if you're if you're judging just the segment and not the decision, the segment didn't work because it baby faced somebody else, and it didn't baby it didn't put heat on the Bucks or FTR. I mean, maybe it put heat I on the Bucks. Yeah, I think it put heat on the got Bucks. FTR over a little bit because they were. I the, think their promo was really good. Yeah. They were very much representing the why are we airing this side of things. What One thing that I don't think it made the Bucks look great in the sense that what was CM Punk's biggest complaint? One of the, he had a lot of complaints, but one of his big complaints was why won't they work with me? Why won't they work with me? Let's make money off of this. And I said it when Punk came back to Collision, he did the counterfeit Bucks lines. Like, dude, they don't want to work with you. They have the right to feel how they feel after All Out. They don't want to work with you. Stop taking shots. Move on on this stuff. Maybe down the line, they'll eventually want to work with you. Right now, they don't want to do it. Stop taking the shots. Now, the Bucks, CM Punk's out of the company. It's like, yeah, sure, let's so show this footage. When you can't build a CM Punk match, like, you wouldn't do this kind of stuff when he was there, when you could have made money with him to work with him but now yeah. he's gone and you're doing this kind of stuff when you can't make any money with him i'm like eh, that's a little no, nobody came out looking like an adult like this i guess no. cm punk looked like an adult because he didn't punch anybody just choked somebody a little yeah yeah he did the responsible <laughs> thing folks yeah he did the um, responsible thing. <laughs> and uh I, I would i would just say that the only thing that he can do to kind of put a bow on this and complete this is that Jack Perry returns at Dynasty and he helps the Bucks win the titles. Oh, Jack and Perry's he, gonna get heat. Yes, tonight. he's the only uh, one that can benefit from this. <laughs> he's selling some t-shirts. He's working uh Chicago when tonight? tonight. Tonight, yeah. Yep. I mean, that's gonna be good, man. Yeah. Can he come out to cult of personality? Oh I was God. going to if Punk didn't come back at the series. That. Yeah. He should he should just do it anyway. Just come out oh, to man. cult of personality. Well, guys, fancy seeing you. Bye, I'm going to make a day trip to the old hometown to see the grandma today. Good to oh, see you. Hope nice. things are well. Bye, buddy. Hope, hope everything's well. <laughs> All right. I feel like we've covered everything we need to cover. Let's move on. <laughs> and the show's over, everybody. <laughs> um, uh, Leave your super chats if you would like. We've already got a few. We'll catch up, them, catch up on yeah. them here in a second. Leave a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, we do a lot of stuff. Come on. Give me the fireworks. I can't get it. It never worked. The fireworks don't really work when I'm in like the host position. I don't know why. Uh, I'll reset. <laughs> oh well. Oh, there, there it is. It is. No right when you right when sign. you right when you want to. Yeah. No longer pointing to the sign. All right, here we go. Shy Town Spurs says, I think this week is the dumbest I've seen in the wrestling fan community B, which is saying a lot. Yes and no. Like, I don't know. I feel like it's every week is dumb. Honestly, I don't know if this week has been any dumber than any other week from being honest about things. Uh, Chris Bordine, our buddy, Music and Moonsault, says, I don't have a problem with Will Clapping black back, but using a 15-year-old insult is a choice. Did he forget Hunter has a big nose, too? Yeah, the, oh, you slept with the boss's daughter. Like, all right, dude, they're married with, like, kids now. Like, okay, is this really an insult? And he's got a high-paying job. Again, congrats on the sex and the, the great position in WWE. I was more not offended, but when he was like, 
shouldn't throw stones at an assassin with a machine gun. I'm like, Jesus. All right. He's threatening to like drive by this man. What is going on here? He was like, okay. he was like oh, I will hit and blade you for real. <laughs> right now, <laughs> right in your pacemaker. There's no machine guns <laughs> in Assassin's Creed, by the way. Like, that game's all about like being stealth. Exactly. And, you know, a machine gun is not, it's not it's yeah, not. a machine gun's not stealth at all. They're gonna know it's you, buddy. <laughs> Shy Towns Fair says, Do you uh guys think the footage would have been better received if they dropped it in the immediate aftermath of all? And yes, I do yeah. think if they had done it then, I think it would have been much better received. People would have still thought how they would have thought, but if you would have done it and you know, Tony gave his I fear for my life sign or, or speech, and then you aired the footage, people would be like, All right, you know what. Punk's a little bit of a jerk. It's justified of why they fired him. Okay, yeah. let's move on. But it was a reactionary thing based on the Punk interview. And this is how they decided to do it. They tried to spin it off into an angle. I think for the most part, they did a good job off of that. This also could have been squashed. Like, I got to put a little bit of, of blame on Tony Khan because he's had opportunities to talk about this. This isn't like, oh, CM Punk just went on a war path because he was on Ariel's show and talked about all this. Tony Khan had opportunities to talk about it. He did what he thought was right and no commented and said, great question, no comment. I don't want to talk about that. Okay, but he had the opportunity to yeah. say, here's what happened here, but he didn't. CM Punk told his side, AW felt, all right, you know what? We're going to now tell our side with the footage. They had opportunities to do this long before CM Punk said anything. And that's why I think it didn't look great because it was like, yeah, you're just doing this because Punk told his side. And you knew Punk was going to tell his side at some point. This wasn't going to be CM Punk's going to be media silent for the rest of his career. And he's never going to talk about this. It popped a rating, sort of. It popped a February 2024 rating off of this. Congratulations. You could have brought back Blue Panther and done the same numbers because that's what you were doing when the CMLL guys were there in February. So I don't even know if it worked to that extent, but Tony Khan had opportunities to talk about this. Other people, and that's why what I just said with the Bucks, like the Bucks didn't want to talk about anything. They wanted to move on. CM Punk didn't want to move on when he was with the company because he saw, hey, let's make money off of this. Now, do I think CM Punk should have moved on? Because it was very clear the Bucks didn't want to work with him at that point in time. Yes, but he didn't want to. He wanted to try to make money. Okay, he kept needling, needling, needling. It got to the point it got to. Okay, but now that he's gone, the Bucks are like, hey, let's let's turn it into an angle now. It's like, well, the biggest player in this angle you can't make any money with because he's gone now. That's where I, well, I'm like, eh. Well, the, the the report more or less says that it was Tony's idea, and the Bucks were were down for it. So I don't want to I don't want to put the 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 message out there like it was the Bucks idea. Oh, let's make money off it now. I do understand the criticism of oh, now you're down for the idea, but yeah. we don't really we don't even really know if the idea was it was the idea really proposed to them or did they already have NDAs and everything in place or had already told Tony when they already came back they did not want to work with CM Punk so Tony didn't even ask them when Punk was finally back a couple of months later like what was it or was it really the six month thing that they were that we heard the report of of they were like oh cm punk has to be good for six months and he only made it two months and got into a backstage fight so i don't know we 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 don't know a lot of these things it does look a little suspect that now you're you're down for the uh idea but if you're down for the idea because it's gonna help jack perry in the end then i can understand this because i can see i i or are from the moment that this was announced that they were going to show the footage and, you know, Sean, you know, confirmed it, that they were going to actually show the punk in Jack Perry footage. I was like, the only way they, they can make this work is that this leads to Jack Perry joining the elite as their new hangman because they already got their Omega replacement in Okada. They can get their Jack Perry here as the uh, hangman replacement and he can kind of groom under them. They can talk for him, be a part of this whole new elite act, which I am enjoying. And I like, like Sean said, the best part about this whole segment was the Bucks intro to it because them, them blaming the whole Funk and Perry fight on them losing to FTR at Wembley stadium. It's hilarious, but honestly, I was like, I was like, after that promo, I didn't even need to see the footage. I was like, you could have just said that. 
<laughs> you could have said, said that. Nobody would look at you differently. That would have been a great promo to probably show the footage next week. Like you can show it next week. I felt like it felt like an intro for the footage, but it also felt like it also felt like uh, a promo that should have set up the segment next week to show the footage. So this is what I said before the footage aired: is they fear they they felt they needed to do this to enhance an angle, right? That that's that, that's what the whole purpose of this is to put more heat on the Bucks and FTR match. That's why they're using it. That's we saw the Bucks intro. We saw the FTR response. They're trying to put more heat or story on the Bucks and FTR match. So they felt the footage was valuable for this angle. That's where I got questions of this is your best idea. Like you had no other ideas to where you felt you could do this without using this footage. You could have easily still done a very similar angle, a very similar story without introducing the footage. Now, would people be like, release the footage, release the footage, release the footage? Yeah, probably. So I understand maybe they felt they were in like a no win situation there, but this was their best idea for the angles. Like we feel we got to release this footage to enhance this angle. Okay. And that's what they decided to do. Now that we've seen the footage, we've seen it. I don't think it really did a whole lot to, yeah, I don't feel like it really enhanced anything. It's like, okay, so this is why you guys, you could have probably told the same story without the footage. It doesn't yeah. make Punk look good. but And I do think that was part of the reason they wanted to do it. It doesn't make Punk look good. But I don't think Punk looked good in the first place. Like his retelling yeah. of the story. I'm like, you don't look that good just the way you're retelling it. It sounds like both of you were kind of in the wrong. Now you look more in the wrong. But even when he was retelling it, I was like, eh, you're you don't sound like you're that great of a person. The fact that he has to be like, I was a professional. I didn't punch him. I just choked him. I'm like, okay, okay. <laughs> I don't feel like he came up that coming off that well out of it anyway. And then he didn't come off well when the footage aired. But you can't actually do anything with him in this. Drew McIntyre is going to make the most money. Oh, Drew McIntyre is going to going to have a field day with this. <laughs> He was like, "Oh, you gotta pick. You gotta pick on freaking. Uh, he's gonna. He's gonna make some type of reference to Jack Perry. I feel it. I feel it in some way. See, I don't know if he's gonna reference like Jack Perry or or. No, he's name. not gonna say his name. Yeah, I think he's gonna. He 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 could make. He can. I know Drew. Drew is clever. I think he might get in like Punk's face and be like, "You're gonna push me and choke me. Like, try it. I dare you. Like something like that." It's a, it's obviously see I'm okay with like wink and nod references. It, Lord knows AEW's done plenty of them. WWE has done plenty of them. You know they talk about Cody smashing the throne. Seth has brought that up before. Seth Seth brought up um when when Punk returned. Punk has done hey, it. Like who goes got, around? We're coming off a of WrestleMania that had the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega got WrestleMania moment. Yeah. Like, like it's all right. You can do plenty of wink and nod references without building your whole show around something that involves somebody else in another company. Yeah. We got more super chats here. Uh, Alexander Fritzero said, I still say when TK came out, apologize about fire punk that he should have aired the footage. Then. Yeah. I think that would have yeah. been the best move and it would have put a lot of things behind you. The punk interview would have been even spicier if the footage had been out. Honestly, exactly. Exactly, because then we, we, we would have heard your side of the story, we would have seen the footage, and all that was left was Punk was Punk saying something. And then we didn't even need a reactionary. Maybe we would have just got the Copeland promo from last week, and then they would have moved on. But I hope that now they can just move on. Hopefully next week's Dynamite is better than next week's Dynamite. They're off to a good start with the uh, Will Ospreay versus Claudio Castanoli matchup, which I'm very much looking forward to. And they probably should have announced on the show. This, I'm just saying, like, like it felt like, like, that's a, they, like that was the problem with this week's show. Like, it felt like too focused on reacting and not focused on being good AEW. Like, we just coming off of a pay per view cycle with Revolution that was one of their best and one of their best pay per views. 
And then, like, the dynasty had a lot of potential in the first couple of weeks with the announcement of Osprey and Brian with, you know, Swerve and Joe. I think Swerve and Joe is the best thing they got going on. And I think that the one great move that they did with this week's episode is starting and finishing with your best program. Starting with the show, with that brawl that came out of nowhere with Swerve and Joe, it was short, it was sweet, got to the point, the spear to the table, separate them, we'll take, we'll, we'll follow it up in the main event, and I thought their brawl in the post-match was a lot of fun. That's their best program going on, and that's a good thing, because that's their main event of their next pay-per-view. I think Brian and Osprey have a strong, a strong program going on, and I think that now that he's got his jab back, which I respect, and he should have done because you don't want to be a punching bag. Now he can just focus on Brian and having a great match with Claudio this coming week. And then they, they're going to, I think that they're going to be the talk after Dynasty. That and Swerve winning the championship, Willow winning the TBS championship. This won't be a topic come next Sunday. I don't think it's going to be a topic come the end of this weekend. Well, after tonight and Jack Perry, yes. But you know, people move on quickly from yeah. a lot of this stuff. That's just how... It works. You know, Sean mentioned the CM Punk interview. They were like, oh, we're happy he just did it this week because by the end, no one's going to care because WrestleMania is going to happen. It's going to be like, okay, sure. He did it on Monday. That's what I thought too, like covering the interview. But then I was like, ah, uh, he's going to do the interview and then he's going to be the responses and the response of the response and the response of the response of the response. I didn't think AEW was going to respond in this way, but you knew there was going to be some type of response. Why Sullivan says, honest opinion, is this over? Will WWE Punk have a subtle dig tonight or Monday? Does AW respond to a response? I, if I'm WWE, WWE did this, by the way, media interviews. Yes, big media interviews. MMA Hour is one of the bigger uh, interview seg interview shows out there. Pat McAfee's show is on ESPN, uh, one of the bigger shows out there. So definitely, like, it's not like they were on fucking this show taking those shots but please come on this show take all your shots on oh show. come on um, come on on down we appreciate that uh you know bigger in interview shows uh bigger studio shows but still studio shows still like online kind of shows and aw did this on their television show if i'm wwe if i'm whoever i'd keep doing this and see if they keep just building their television shows around taking shots at me like, like every every time you have a media, they're gonna probably get an email. Like every time you got a media, get in the AEW dig. They're gonna, yeah. they're gonna take the bait. I, I, and really, and really, they do. Like they'll send like Michael Cole to to do something like on the Pat McAfee show, and he'll throw in a in a subtle dig, or he'll do the panel like he did. Oh, oh the, the guy that all the internet wrestling marks make their headlines <laughs> off of. Like he'll he'll say some sick sick stuff. So yeah. I would WWE, keep doing WWE, WWE feels like it's baiting AEW at this. That's what it felt like during WrestleMania. It felt yes. like a lot of baiting of of AE of AEW. And I, for one, I did not like Triple H saying that on the Pat McAfee show. As a New Yorker, it very much gave me the energy of a guy on the corner when a whole group of girls come by and he tries to holler at them and they keep walking and ignoring them. And he's oh, they ugly anyway. That's what Triple H did. You got turned down, and then you said he verbatim, and you're you're good with the transcribing. He said, "I didn't good. I didn't pick you. I'm I'm happy I didn't pick you." What you no? That's not how that worked. He no. Osprey didn't pick you. Like like stop. You gotta. He's. He, I love that they they make certain terminology. When Triple H made those comments, like my mind didn't immediately jump to Osprey. Like he made those comments. I'm just like, oh, he's taking shots at just like everybody who signed with AEW, not just Osprey. Because obviously they got they, they got Okada, they got Mercedes, they got Osprey. It was like, oh, these are just shots at all of them. I mean, to me, that's what it was. I guess people pointed out, like, oh no, this was directly Osprey. I was like, okay, if y'all if y'all say so, like I do think Osprey is included in that. But to me, I was just like, this is everybody who's ever signed with AEW. This is not just osprey this is you know again the, the this could be danielson as well because danielson decided to sign with them sure. instead of returning the this can be edge because he wanted to uh sign with them it could just be literally anybody who was signed yeah jay white although i do think wwe wanted jay white and it was the hiring freeze portion of things and that's why yeah. 
it didn't yeah. happen. Um, yeah. but least- no one, no, but it could it, Triple H could, could have not been talking about these guys because no one else said those specific things that he mentioned when he when he was directing that shot. Like it maybe it was why Okada went to AEW, maybe it was why Jay White went to AEW. Only Will Ospreay said that, yeah. I, I so, didn't think so there's a there's a, like it, I I that's why I want to I want to throw that whole illusion of oh wrestling fans are just assuming Triple H is talking about no he was like <laughs> like it, it just is it is what it is. Uh, somebody said MJF. It was a shot at MJF. <laughs> I didn't think much of it. I I like I thought of it because it's like oh he's definitely taking shots at just AEW in general. But to me, people you know people got uh their a lot of their opinions was oh so it's okay for WWE to throw shots and not AEW? No, yeah, all of them should throw shots. Good, I'm yeah. all for all of these I'm shots. Before. My my issue is I don't need AEW taking up television time to do this. If they want to throw all their shots on Twitter again, Tony, Tony is throwing shots on Twitter all the time. I don't get mad at that. I, I, I think we started this year with Tony yeah. uh, hindering gender. Like, yeah, we start off the year with that. Good. Both companies should do that. It's funny to me. It gives me something to write about. Not that I don't have enough, but it's easy to it's easy to spin this and write about all of this stuff. But don't take up your TV time doing it. That's my whole point is like because you can't build anything you can't build a will osprey triple h match you can't build cm punk against whoever you can't build those that kind of stuff so that's why i don't see the purpose of using tv time for again you want to do wink and nod references fine but have it build to actually something will osprey dedicating half his promo to triple h doesn't do anything for me it just doesn't No, no, I, I definitely understand it. I I felt like I don't mind the jab, and I honestly prefer that type of response than any of the other responses because it's like three instances of responses over two weeks to WWE stuff, which is a little much in my opinion. I just wouldn't have done it on this show after airing the uh, punk footage and then punk getting cheered for it and being the baby face in this situation. That's, that's why... If you say this footage backfired, it's tough for me to disagree because they got a CM Punk chant out of yeah. the beatdown on Pack. Like that was not the intended purpose of this, and that's what they got. Like they they did the beatdown on Pack, and fans are like, "Hey, when's CM Punk gonna show up to to save it?" It's like, and, oh, and, that's not great. And you know what? It's hilarious because it wasn't until that happened that I realized that AEW would have been the only company really that CM Punk left and didn't have constant CM Punk chance right after. Like really it was Chicago that yeah, weekend and it, was done. and it was done and they moved, they could have moved on without ever hearing a CM Punk chant, but they had to react and air the footage. And that's my issue is that anything on your segment, if it's not number one, to either draw a rating or to be entertaining, at preferably both, then that should be the top two reasons that you do anything on your television. And it wasn't the top two reasons here. Number one reason was to be petty and to react. And number two was the pop a rating. When, when, it number, when that should be number one and Number two should be to make the segment entertaining. And I don't even think they did that. I think the first portion in the introduction was entertaining, but they could have made it more entertaining by just going full throttle with just making it ridiculous and just commentating over the segment like you did, like you had the voiceover. That's what kind of killed it a little bit. And then you had to throw FTR out there and FTR kind of speaking to the fans that just want to move on. I think they got a really good promo, but when the beat down afterwards to kind of even even add more heat and more attention to the rivalry going into Dynasty, when it gets a response of CM Punk chance, then yeah, you took the L here. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and the rating, okay, it popped it. It it popped it to a February 2024 number. Like it's not like it no Millie. Like it did no. didn't do this huge number. For it. it just it got it up to where it was two months ago okay was it worth it 
I don't know. I don't I don't think the footage was worth it when you could have told a very similar story, basically the same story without the footage. That's it. So, uh, yeah, we'll see where it's going to continue to, you know, we still got FTR and the Bucks to go until Dynasty and they'll, I hope they just, they don't need to reference Punk anymore. Jack Perry will get involved. I don't know who FTR's third man is. CM Punk, maybe this is all work. Copeland. CM Punk's coming back. This Copeland. No, I think I think Copeland Copeland already teased. He teased that after the he's the teaming scene. with he's teaming he, with Mark Briscoe. That's, and, that's something for Mark for Mark and his rivalry with uh with House of Black, which probably will lead to Brody King getting an ROH World Title matchup. But I think that that's just for the time being. I think Copeland, what was it? Right before um right after the Young Bucks attacked Sting and Darby after they won the tag team titles, yeah. it was two people. It was Kingston and Copeland that mentioned the beatdown and said they'd be watching the Young Bucks. They already interacted and fought with Kingston. They're going to do Copeland next. Copeland and FTR versus Perry and the Young Bucks. We're in Copeland, Okada. Okada's still in the mix. So Okada going to be doing going to be doing continental title things. He's going to be facing the packs of the world and other and other. It is a shame. It is a shame that Brody King never got a shot at that continental title against Eddie Kingston. Like that's a dropped sure. ball right there. He beat that's Eddie true. Kingston and the Kingston avenged the other losses. But like he should have faced Eddie Kingston for the title. That's a That was such a layup to do it. Such a lit. That's what they do all the time in New Japan in the G1. Whoever loses in New Japan, whoever loses in G1, the winner, they defend the briefcase against who they lost to in the tournament. They, it's a they were just they were just worried about doing the uh, old Brian and him after that, since they were one one in the Continental Classic. But then they should have just done a Brody King match after that. They, instead, he defended the title. He faced like uh Brian Keith, right? He first Brian yeah. Keith, he faced right. uh, Trent Beretta. Why didn't he face Brody King? I agree. That should have been a first challenger right after the Continental yeah. Classic. Will Chisholm says the only one who looks good is Kenny Omega from the start. Kenny Omega is truthfully the adult. Kenny Omega <laughs> did adult. nothing wrong right from the start. I said this. That's been my mantra ever since Brawl Out. I've been, I, I'm, I'm going to make t shirts that Kenny Omega did nothing wrong. Alexander Fitzgerald said after FTR and Bucks, what if Motor City Machine Guns come out? That's fine. It's a cool, cool moment. How does CM Punk fit in? That's all I know. Punk, punk, punk and the machine guns. Oh man, I never thought of that one. Uh, how is how is CM Punk? Now nah, I would love I would love the motor city machine guns in AEW, and it would add to the more focus that we're getting on the tag team division. Because regardless of my critiques or my criticism, nitpicking of the segment. That was a lot of attention on the AEW World Tag Team title feud, and it's been a while since we had that much attention on an episode of Dynamite on the AEW World Tag Team title feud. Well, they've you know they're doing this whole we didn't tournament. we didn't even get this much attention during the build up to the third match going into All In. That match wasn't great. Just I like I like I thought I thought the match was great. I didn't think the build I I didn't think the build to their first match was great. I thought that was awful. Uh, at the second match, I thought that that was kind of it came out of nowhere. So that was fun, and that that's their best match that they ever had. And then the the third match, the build kind of just felt off. The whole oh greatest team of a generation, and they're both baby faces, and it's like nah, I need one of y'all to be heels. Yeah, well, now you've kind of got heels. The, yeah. the Bucks are technically the heels. The, the Bucks are the heels. Yeah. The Bucks are awesome as heels. I, I like the EVP characters. It's good. It's good. I think, I think sometimes they should have leaned into it almost a little bit more, though, because they still they still want to be like wink and nod cool heels. And I think they can be even more of like just zero redeeming quality heels. Cause that first beat down on sting and Darby, like that's what you felt. Yeah. Like you, yeah. you felt they were like zero redeeming quality heels. And now that's what, that's what I felt in the revolution match. The, 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 the revolution match against Sting and Darby. That's I thought that was one of their best like performances as heels in a matchup. That's because sting rules. 
No, they were just awesome in that. Like watching it back, I was there live and I was all into staying. But watching it back, I was like, no, the Bucks were awesome heels were. and just just being so irredeemable, so so dastardly, and the the I'm not sorry, I hate you. <laughs> that was great. But seems like ever since Sting and Darby, that whole program ended. We're still trying to find that kind of peak EVP character right now. Well, I imagine they're gonna win the titles. I think they beat. Yeah. FTR and then they got gold. Okada's got gold. They just continue to, you know, throw throw their uh EVP status around. And I'd like them to go even further with it, truthfully. Like that's I, what I think. Jack Perry joins them and he beats Copeland for the TNT title. Okay. More gold, more gold to the elite. So when Kenny comes back, it's just like, oh, I see you guys have moved on. <laughs> Hopefully Kenny's back sooner rather than later i, I know he's he's going to be careful with his health but kenny being back would, would be a big boost for for everything but uh, i i i think they can go even further with it truthfully i do like this is a, a very authority angles typically have played it's very well in in wrestling wwe completely overdid it after a while because they they it worked so well with Austin and McMahon. So they just completely, they just went full bore with it. But authority angles typically go very much, uh, you know, it's, it's wrestling. That's what a lot of wrestling is, is founded on of, Hey, stand up against the man type of thing. Even if it's not like a central actual authority figure, that's yeah. still what wrestling kind of is, is like this high status guy against this, common man it's dusty and flair right it's every yeah the everyday man versus the upper class rich man that's trying to keep us under his thumb like dusty and rick flair austin and mcmahon like the story goes on and on and on so like i like the evps versus like the ftr kind of being the kind of the definition of the everyday man and i, I think they're gonna have a great match at dynasty i felt like their best match like i said was their second match when the bucks was heel and ftr was baby faces and I think that's where they're going to have their best match possible. Young Bucks should just do a bunch of headlocks. Absolutely. Just get heat. The whole yeah. match. <laughs> Nothing but headlocks. And they should do all fits. All fists. No all flips. Fist, yeah. All fists and kicks. No flips, though. Just all fists fist and, and kicks. kicks. That's <laughs> all. Yeah. And headlo Again, headlocks. Just ground them. That's it. That's it. It'll be a good match, uh, you know, and then Jack Perry will run in and people will maybe cheer or boo. Maybe they'll start a CM Punk champ. That's, probably a CM Punk, probably a CM yeah, Punk see, champ. <laughs> if I'm AEW, I'm a little bit concerned about that. Is Jack Perry yeah. runs in and the end result is you've got these tag team champions, your new champions, the Young Bucks and Jack Perry celebrating as the crowd chants for CM Punk. That would be uh, not the best optics in the world. That's why that's why I said that you got to put them against like one of your your top your like top line main event or legend baby faces. So Copeland kind of fits that bill. Copeland, you can at least get the fans to at least cheer for Copeland against Jack Perry instead of cheering for CM Punk. The longer you kind of keep him just in the group or trying to talk, I know that if he tries to have an in ring promo, it's just going to be CM Punk chance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Will Chisholm says, do you know if Mercedes is cleared to wrestle? If not, then why is her first match a double or nothing? Well, she said she was healthy in interviews. The fact that her first match is not till double or nothing makes me believe she's not healthy because why would you wait until May to do her first match? That seems a little counterintuitive based on when you brought her in. I mean, it's going to be two months through. Yeah. Two months. May is the fifth month. I'm terrible at math. Um, it's going to be two months since her debut before her first match. Like you, you probably want to get her in the ring a little bit more because I mean, these, these segments right now are just, they're there. You know, I'm not super interested in a lot of it for being honest. They just like it feels very much like the promo work feels very paint by the numbers and it doesn't feel like it has a lot of passion and emotion behind them. And then the 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 whole beatdown segment, it was fine, but I'm sorry for you know, I'm sorry, Miss Hades, for all the fans out there that took the, that final moment of you 
groaning in pain as something else. <laughs> I had to do a double take when she was there. I was like typing and then I was like, what the hell is going on <laughs> up there? It's like, it's like, let me look at the screen. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are they airing up dynamite all of a sudden? I just what heard a lot on? of banging. What, what's going yeah. on in there, mom and dad? <laughs> why is what? Why is mom sad like that? What is happening around here? Once she wrestles, people will forget about a lot of these segments because you know she, she's. I've said it before. I think she's the best female American wrestler in the world. So she's going to. She, she's going to hopefully end all doubt when she's back in the ring. It'll be a year uh, before, you know, she's had her last match coming off a pretty serious ankle injury. Um, so I don't know how she's going to look coming off of that and a year away from the ring. I suspect she'll be fine. And once she does wrestle, I assume she'll erase a lot of doubts, a lot of doubts. Yeah, it just it just like it feels like we're just missing the mark right now. Like it feels like if you if she's hurt, I understand that. But I know I know she's gonna get cheered in some places, but Mercedes is best as a heel. So I think that that was the, like I, I I will keep echoing she should have just hit she should have just dropped Willow that first night at Big Business. And that should just be her character. Because I think that that would fit in well with a lot of the things she's saying. A lot of the things she's saying would come across better if she was just a heel. Just would. I, I agree because her character is like, pay me a bunch of money. I'm all about the money. Yeah. This is kind of a heelish character. Like, this isn't like, oh yeah, let's do that. As a baby. This isn't babyface and get behind this rich status kind of person. Again, most rich people are the heels in wrestling because it is a class thing. So, and if her first program is Willow Nightingale, like, when are you going to pull the trigger here? Because this is not going to work babyface versus babyface. This is not, the buildup is not going to be as effective as it could be if she's not a heel. Like, even New Japan introduced her as a heel. Like, it, it feels like every company, when she makes a return, even though they know she'll get popped, they make her a heel because that is where she is best. So I don't understand why AEW is like kind of like hesitant to pull the trigger. I nearly made, I nearly made Steven Jensen quit the spotlight yesterday by pointing out that Cody is not a baby face. <laughs> he near, I really thought he was going to quit. I'm going to clip it. I want to put it on my, my Twitter today. I really thought he was going to quit. Did, did you did you mention how he flipped me off in 2017? No. And he and he gave and he gave other he gave other <laughs> other people of the same complexion the two sweet, Mister Mister I solve racism. Should have brought he that needs up. To solve, he needs to solve the AEW WWE war. If anybody can do it, it's Cody. He's the only one who's just like, all right, guys. No, I'm not going to bury them. No, I don't agree with CMI. <laughs> I saw the asking why I tortured Jensen. I don't know. It's fun. It's fun. I got so many messages. My wife was even mad at me. She's like, you got to stop this. This is supposed to be Steven Jensen's big celebration. This big celebration because Cody won and you're over here completely trolling him. People, so many people message me after this. It's like, you, See, man, you're, you're me. You know, what's really mean about that. Is that you didn't invite me on? Because I would have came on and I would have been like, "Man, I was so happy to see the story getting finished. You know, to see him get his arms raised at the end of the night." Triple H has never had a WrestleMania moment like that. Like he finally got to finish his story. Who was it? Who was it that that came out at the end of the night? Who's the big baby? Yeah. Baby? Oh, I did, that. I did that. <laughs> Alexander Fitzgerald. H. I assume referencing uh, my yeah. Thank you, Triple H. That was the the big story coming out of WrestleMania. Triple yeah. H has saved wrestling. That's what people are really mad about with Will Ospreay's shots. They're like, how can you take shots at this man who saved professional how, wrestling? How can you how can you do that to Jesus Christ, a professional wrestling himself? Stephanie McMahon invented women's wrestling, and now you were taking shots at her husband who saved professional wrestling. How dare you do that? That cannot happen, William Ospreay. The only man that can lead us through chaos. It's he can man the ship. 
It's not. No, no, no. He, he didn't. He didn't know how to run a, a chaos. He just forgot about chaos. He just left them. He's like, he just left here. them. He just left them hanging. Made God, them give up the six. Tough. Made them give up the never open way six man tag team titles. Poor Ishii. And the crowd and champions some, some tournament. I'll yeah, say. it's gonna be in uh, Taiwan at Wrestling World sure. this this Sunday. Uh, I think Lij is gonna win because you got uh, Shingo, Bushi, and Yoda Suji. Uh, but the unfortunate thing of that is, I think they're on the same side as House of Torture, the same side of the bracket as House. Hell of yeah, House of Torture should win. Uh, please don't do that to me. We we, we, don't, we just had Evil lose a title. Can we not do that? What, not? What's your what's why are you against House of Torture? Because they're not good. Hmm. Outside of Jack Perry, Jack Perry's the best part. Best part of House of Torture. House, of, they're, they're the number one merch seller. So clearly because of Jack Perry, somebody. because of Jack Perry, the draw. Okay, so they recruited Jack Perry, so they clearly have an eye for talent. I'm like Swerve Strickland. What's his group doing? Huh? He terrible recruiting tactics. Hey, man, all, all those guys get TV time. That's all he's worried about. He's like, you get TV time, you cash your checks, give Nana, you know, his 15%. And Scouting I'll take 10%. department. Scouting department is awful. House of Torture scouting department knows what's up. I mean, House of Torture, I will say. Ren Narita and Jack Perry. That's right. That is that is that is good recruitment for 2024. They're on they're Top on two. a good they're Top they're doing a lot. They're do they're doing a, as good as Triple H is in free agency. I know. Yeah. Everybody's down on house of torture, not me. Just remember <laughs> that. Head of the curb. Head of the curb. Hey, and Triple H might be adding the same guy that a whole bunch of WWE people in January was like, who's hooked? They might be adding him soon with the uh, report from S.E. Scoops this week uh, reporting that Hook is looking to explore free agency when his contract expires later this year. Do you think that we see Hook make the jump to WWE or what percentage are you willing to put on? Uh, I don't know. I say 50-50. Chris Jericho is going to make sure he doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> I think Chris Jericho is the reason why he wants to explore free agency. He's like, is, he's like, man, I thought I was, I thought I was staying here to get a push. I thought I was the new pillar. Me and Daniel Garcia here is waiting around forever. You still, you still waiting for Sammy to get back and get on the media? Does, does Hook, the, is he willing to embrace the grind? That's really what I need to know. If he's not, then clearly he's going to stay with AEW. And if he's ready to embrace the grind, then he'll, he'll go to WWE. And uh, you know, you know, if you're willing to embrace the grind and um, realize that you know that hook name is never going to make you any money, we're going to make you um, uh, Taz Junior. Taz, Ma no, 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 Tyler Tasmaniac. There we go. Tyler Tasmaniac. <laughs> they're going to make him tweet. The man hasn't tweeted once. They're going to make him tweet. That's going to be <laughs> the gotta, death of the tweet. character. Tweet your debut. I don't know when Coke's contract's actually up. It's just sometime in 2024. So I don't know when it's like actually up. He's smart. He's smart to uh, to explore his options. I think everybody's smart to explore their options when their contract's up. So it will see what he does. And whatever makes him happy, that's what I've always said. Like, you know, if they're happy taking the, the money that's offered for whichever company and doing whatever they're doing for whichever company. Good on them. Good yeah. on them. I'm, I'm all for people going back and forth wherever they're going to get used and be happy and make as much money as possible. I am pro the performers more than anything. Chaton Spare says, cannot wait for hook versus Josh Briggs lay street fight match at stand deliver. Hell yeah. Let's go. That would rule. Honestly, Yo, I can't, man, Hook gonna be NXT champion. What y'all, yo, y'all playing right now? Don't, don't play my boy Hook. I, I, I've, I haven't got to hang out with Hook, man. That's one of the coolest, coolest people I've ever got to hang out with in the wrestling business. Hook's gonna come in and like not do anything for like six months, and people are gonna be like, oh, what are they doing with Hook? They're fumbling Hook. 
why aren't they booking them? Why aren't they using them? And then it'll like squash a couple people. It's like, this is just like AEW. All they're doing is using them just like AEW did. And that's it. Absolutely. And we'll see what happens after that. I hey, do think that, that that's the right way to lose them, I guess. I do think that AEW could have done a bit more with Hook coming out of the Samoa Joe match because, like, that was a big match. He had a great performance in that match. And then, like, to put him with Chris Jericho. It's like, yeah, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. It it felt like it was something to the pop the people that were Hook fans when he put them in the Joe matchup and they didn't have the like the proper follow up because he followed that with kind of a mini program with Brian Cage that ended on, you know, I think the Dynamite after Revolution. And then from there, I know at Revolution, he was in that multi man that was supposed to be the meat madness matchup, but became a number one contenders matchup instead. He was in that. Then, then he got into the Jericho program, and it's just been like, Jericho is not the right person you want to be in a program with right now. I don't think, I don't think there's, I don't think there's more like a character that I'm least interested in in AEW than Chris Jericho. You don't want to sit under the learning tree of Chris Jericho, the educator, Chris Jericho, the rarefied heir of Jericho. I, I will give him credit. I appreciate him going full throttle on just being a heel and being a jerk. I, I appreciate that. He came down the heel entrance way last week. This week, he was coaching up Shibata and Hook to the point that Shibata even had to ask the question, which with the quickest fingers ever, he had that or, or he already had that statement prepared to read he's from got, his Google Translate. He's got preset stuff in there. You know? He's got preset stuff? Like, yeah. what's his deal? Yeah. Just preset. Some things, some questions you just know you're going to ask. And that's something Shibata just knew he was going to ask. Shibata is the person where I'm like, what are we doing? We built we built the Danielson and Osprey. It's like, oh, these are dream matches. These are big time matches. Taking on Shibata, this is something. These are big wins for these guys. And he looks like a dork next to Jericho and Hook. Like Shibata is a well-traveled, well-respected. He's a trainer himself, veteran. Shibata's not stupid. He know what Chris Jer- He should know what Chris Jericho's doing, and he's taking the loss. I assume he'll get the win back uh, against Moriarty tomorrow night. So, like, okay. I, I thought I thought it was I. You know, despite my my feelings on Shibata taking a loss ever, I'm not comfortable with with Lee Moriarty beating Shibata. I wasn't comfortable with Willa Yuta eventually beating Will, uh, Shibata, but. I, I understand the point of that was to put over this new version of Shane Taylor promotions who never win. So I was like, okay, at least there, at least there was some good out of this segment. There was something good out of this segment, and we got Shane Taylor promotion finally a win on TV against yeah, someone they, that mattered. Right, but now if Shabbat is just going to beat Moriarty tomorrow, then it's like, all right, we're almost. Then that's that's just Lee. I'm talking about we gotta get we gotta continue the momentum for Shane Taylor promotions as a mm. unit. Well, good luck when you're potentially feuding with Chris Jericho and that's your tie-in here. But see to, to me, like you're either you're 50 ing the Shibata Lee portion of things, or you're making Shibata this loser when you just used him to try to put over this Danielson and Osprey match. Is this going to lo- lead to Shabbat versus Jericho? Maybe. Honestly, maybe. I would have just, I would have put somebody else in the spot. That's all. Somebody who, like, it's okay if they would, like, you do the Shabbat, Osprey, and Danielson matches, and you sell them the same way you sell them. And then in the this spot in particular, no, like, there, there has to be somebody else in that locker room who I probably would have used someone who wasn't as much of a vet who could be like, who, who would actually like fall for Jericho's kind of tricks. I guess. Dan Housen. Oh, he ain't being used at all right now. <laughs> Dan Housen is liking too much, uh, pro CM Punk stuff on Twitter. So I don't know if he's gonna, if he's going to be used. Let me, let me look at the roster. Right, fast for or what's a, what's AR Fox doing? Put AR Fox in this. But he's spot. a vet. He's a vet. He's a trainer as well. This yeah, is the same but problem he's, as Shibata. 
he's a vet trainer who I love AR Fox. It, you listen to anybody speak about AR Fox. He's gotten all of his accolades, all of his uh, well-deserved flowers on television though. He hasn't quote unquote made it right. Like he's yeah. lost every big match. You know, he's just, he's just a, a guy on television. Yeah. He's a veteran. So to him, he could like be like, no, listen to Chris, man. Listen to Chris. Like that's who you want to be like that. The, the top of the top. Because like, look at me, like, you know, I've Shabbat has made it. Shabbat has been you know, champion. Shabbat is billed as well, no, he's, a, never a been, he's never been a world champion. He's been the ROH peer champion. That counts. That don't. That's not a world title. <laughs> Will you stop it? He never won the IWGP heavyweight championship. Never won the ROH world championship. But you're not going to do like, like those type of promos. So I can understand using AR Fox instead. They go with. Pull Jake Hager out of nothing, and he'll he'll always go along with Chris Jericho. Of course he will. I'm just saying Shibata shouldn't have been the guy when you just told me for a couple of weeks, hey, Shibata's a big deal. We're using him to help sell why Osprey and Danielson is a big deal. But now we're going to make Shibata look like he has no clue what's actually going on and losing him and losing to Lee Moriarty. There just should have been somebody else for that spot. That's all. Yeah. That's fair. You got plenty of people under contract. Just put somebody else in that spot. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you there. I didn't. I didn't like Shibata taking the loss there. That was one of the main reasons why I didn't. Not, I was not very high. This was the first. This was the first time ever on AE Ramble that back to back weeks I rated Dynamite lower than Jimmy Macaron. Wow. Back to back wow. weeks. I gave it a six and a half last week. This week, I think I gave it a six. Out of ten, that's very surprising. You, what did Jimmy give it? Jimmy was just above me. He gave this week a six and a, six and a half. He gave last week a seven. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. But that ain't surprising. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't the best show in the no. world. You know? That's all I want. I want. I want Dynamite to be a fun show. I thought. Last week's show had good parts to it, but I think that a last week's show, I was just mentally scarred from that daddy ass versus Jay White matchup. Like, oh. I was like, I was like, I was like, no, I was like, I, I've never, I have never hated a dynamite match more than that. I probably have never, there's probably been worse dynamite matches than that one, but I've never hated a dynamite match more than that one. So I think that's that. That affected my whole scoring for last week. But this week, it just felt off. Like, the zooming on the backstage and interviews, what was going on there? It felt like this was the first time I was like, oh, Mike Manzuri did learn from Kevin Dunn. Oh, yeah. The, the zooming <laughs> on the Mercedes interview was something else. Ooh, yeah. It was something else. It was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. I didn't. There I didn't has like been, there has been some WWE feel to the shows that there used to not be there. And it's pushing the alternative, trying to push that you're an alternative. It doesn't feel that way. Because you're doing some WWE trade, and WWE is now moving away from that with all their production tricks. Yeah. So it, it it just it feels like they're just a step behind with some of that stuff instead of not even being ahead, but just being different. Now it just feels like oh, you're just kind of doing a lot of the WWE tricks here. But even WWE has moved on from that, and we don't like those tricks anyway. <laughs> Exactly. Don't don't do the stuff that we didn't like from 2010 WWE. Do like do the stuff that made AEW fresh and different in 2019 through 2021 when they were hot. I want to see that. What they did following Revolution. It was like, you know, the whole new set. It felt vibrant. Those first three weeks after Revolution felt like a show that had a pulse on it and was leading in the right direction coming off a great show at revolution and the great build up to that show. You know, we had the, the follow-up with Okada's debut then you had Mercedes at big business. Then you had the show in Toronto with Copeland and Christian. And it just seems like the, and then I think the week after that was Shibata and Osprey and Takeshita and Swerve. But the last two weeks, it just felt a little off as we get closer to the pay-per-view that's not what I want to see. I want to see you keep this secession going, but 
it seems like you're more focused on something else than providing an entertaining show. Well, this week they were definitely focused on something else. Uh, hopefully they get back on track a little yeah. bit. Um, you know, we'll see. Coming up next week, they're doing Osprey and Claudio, which will obviously be a great match. Um, I, I am looking forward to Collision because Azumi's debuting in AEW, and that was one of the best parts of Dynamite, was Amina Shirakawa debuting because that woman has the if factor. She has so much charisma, and if this is all leading to a love triangle between Mariah May, Timeless Tony Storm, and Mina Shirakawa, you could sign me up. I did like that debut. I needed a video package to know who she was. Um, I did I did like that, and then the Mariah May, Tony Storm stuff is, is good. The Tony Storm thunder rosa stuff it's not existent yeah it doesn't feel like it has much to it and that's why i'm only going like good with mariah may tony storm because the the story should be more tony storm thunder rosa that's your big title match and it feels very much afterthought right now yeah it 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 really does that whole segment with the champagne toast i was like so you really only had 30 seconds for them to do this? And... Well, FTR came out. FTR came out. They weren't on the rundown. And so uh, something had to get cut short, you know? Uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. That, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a good follow-up. That was a good, that was a good answer. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then they tried to do the, the wiping of the face paint, which is uh, one of my favorite early AEW angles when Britt Baker attacked uh, Thunder Rosa in what looked like a mall and like wiped the, the, the face paint off of her face. It was like that added so much to their original feud. And then they tried to do it here. And Thunder Rosa has an extra layer of makeup. It just didn't work out. Tony's been doing better building the interview, just or building the match in interviews when she's like, yeah, Thunder Rosa got a back injury because she couldn't carry the company. She wasn't strong enough to carry the title. That's why she hurt her back. A great line. I, I want I want Rosa to call her out for the stuff she said about, you know, her not wanting to drop the title to her I, and stuff like I that. Want that. That would add too. something. I want that as well. And and you have that history. You, you can actually do the match. Play off that. Yeah. Play off that. Shut down Spurs says if there's one positive to take from Wednesday is that when more all of the card not confined to one block, multiple stories advance. That's true. Yeah. They've done that a good is. job, by the way, with with the women and featuring them more throughout the card and having multiple stories with everything. They've been they've been doing that all year. That that predates like Mercedes yeah. even coming yeah. in. Yeah, I, I, I've been a big advocate of it. I, I say that the, the difference point was uh, after All Out. After All Out, they really focused on building up Timeless Tony Storm and Julia Hart. And that's why Julia Hart and Chris Statlander, uh, their build up and their matchup at Wrestle Dream was so successful and led to Julia Hart winning the TBS title at Full Gear. And then from there, they just started having more matches on like Collision and stuff. They got Thunder Rosa come back. They had Serena Deeb come back. Queen Amanada stepped up. Mariah May came in. Like they, they're filling out this roster very well, and different people are standing out. And I thought that Mariah May and Anna Jay had a very hard hitting matchup. And Mariah May might be the, the hardest hitter in the women's division right now, even in a division that has Thunder Rosa and Mercedes Monet. Yeah, but Mariah May is doing great. I do look forward to when she fully drops the uh, Tony Storm cosplay and gets gets to be in just Mariah May. Um, the love triangle stuff is good, and we'll see where it continues uh, continues to go. On that, and you know, Keyshawn saying nobody talking about the women though, they're talking about the silly video. Look, that was almost by design. AEW, that, that's what they built up, that's what they hyped. You knew that was going to be the case, yeah. you just knew it. I look, it was a sort of a bit, but also truthful. Like, I, I tweeted something about the video, plenty of engagement on that. You tweet something about, hey, this match was good. Or, hey, here's an actual criticism I have. No one cared. No one cared. Like, yeah. people, that's all they wanted to talk about was the video. And well, that's what everybody's talking about. It happened. FTR says move on. Hopefully they move on. 
until yeah, the same they're, they're, starts. They'll be talking. They'll be talking about the women when they want that to be the focus. All these companies do that. The women had had a great WrestleMania weekend with Rhea Ripley and Bianca and uh, Becky Lynch tearing it up on night one, and B- Bailey and Io Sky. If it wasn't for the main event, they would have had the match of the night. I didn't hear much talk about any of those matches. All the talk was about Cody and the Triple, well, Triple H era. H. Because Triple that's H. what the company wanted the focus to be on. Just like AEW. This week, they wanted the focus to be the silly video. Last week, the focus was the contract signing with Swerve and Samoa Joe. And, and the really bad daddy ass and Jay White. So it's just like. I don't it's like they wanted week. that to be the focus. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. But that was my focus. It's like, why did you do that? I mean, that was that was the focus for a lot of people. Uh, they didn't really. I guess they did follow it up in some way. If they yeah, follow I, it I, up, I Jay White did the right thing. Jay White, that was the perfect kill response to act like it never happened. He was yeah. like, "I know you guys don't want to see me beat up, <laughs> beat up, beat up uh, Daddy S anymore." I was like, "That did not happen." But thank you for just moving <laughs> on. <laughs> Jay White just ignored it. As he should, as he should just ignore that stuff. Uh, anything else from Dynamite you want to talk about, SP3? Yeah, I think we, we very much covered everything from Dynamite this week. We got uh, some wrestling this weekend with New Japan Pro Wrestling, NJPW, Windy City Riot. Going to be, is this, is it going to be sold out or is what, what is the, the count? At? It's close. Uh, I think I'll go to WrestleTix right now. I think they were still a few hundred short. Okay. Um, which which see. Chicago always has a good walk. Up, so yeah, uh, they're they're at six thousand one thirty six, and the setup is for six thousand six twenty seven. So they're so okay. four ninety one available. I, that would have to be a pretty big walk up. And we've seen we've seen that you know recently with like AEW and even WWE. WWE had a ridiculous walk up for NXT. I think like the last count for NXT before they for stand and deliver was like fourteen thousand, and then they got up to sixteen thousand, yeah. seventeen thousand. Yeah, but you're talking about you know that's a I know we're never going week. Even yeah, at, like they, they had plenty of people there, so you know the there were already. But, but uh, AEW with Toronto and Boston last month, they had big walk ups. That's still a pretty big walk up though. Four nearly five hundred people walk up. I mean, they're not the Mystico is not on the card, so that's true. That is true. They, know, they love Lucha Libre in Chicago. <laughs> they should have got a Luchador on there, but I really like the card uh, for tonight. I think that the main event is very intriguing, very unpredictable. I know, yeah. more, as the days and weeks have gone by, we've heard more and more of a vocal minority of fans who. Some are New Japan fans, some are just AEW fans, and some are just people who know John Moxley, who want Moxley to win the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship and making a big deal about the fact that, you know, on commentary at Sakura Genesis, they talked about uh, Moxley can become the first ever global Grand Slam champion. Yeah, he said that, that name sucks. <laughs> Moxley's like, I'm not fucking calling it that. <laughs> He's like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> but he'll be the first guy to win the WWE, AEW, and IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. So that is very, that is very intriguing, uh, intriguing possibility. And it really depends on what Moxley's schedule would be as far as what he's, what the travel is going to be and what the plan overall is going to be for Moxley as champion. Because that's not a long-term thing. That's not something that I don't, if Moxley wins tonight, I don't suspect him to hold the title until next year's Wrestle Kingdom. That ain't happening. But I could see no, but he could hold it till Dominion Door, or yeah, Forbidden Door. Yeah, Forbidden you could door. do that. I think That's... Dominion and Forbidden Door are going to be like two weeks apart. I I think Forbidden Door is, is definitely a possibility. So the big shows between now and Forbidden Door are what do we have? I I don't know if he's going to work all for together. New Japan. Uh, yeah, he'll probably. Dun- it's Dantaku, Resurgence. Then you got the Best of Super Juniors tournament, Best of Super Juniors finals, then Dominion. He can work Resurgence. That's in America. That's yeah. in California. So we can work that. Um, yeah, D- Dominion 
he can work one of those. Shit, he'll probably work the Despia Invitational. He fucking loves Desperado. I, I just felt, but I just feel like Moxley winning the title is very short sighted if you're New Japan, and it very much feels like once again you're passing over on establishing Naito with this title run. Naito really needs to be established as your number one guy because he's your number one guy. Like when that happens, when you're left with just one of your top stars, when you had like three last year, you had like the year before that, you had like four, and now you're down to one. I think that the guy that's the one should have a credibility building title reign. So I think that they have set it up nicely with the whole storyline of his title reign not being about anymore. You know, a lot of the build up to Wrestle Kingdom was about, oh, Naito really wants to do the roll call at Tokyo Dome. I like how they parlayed that into his whole title reign is about he's an adrenaline junkie and all he wants is the next roll call and the next roll call and the roll yeah. call after that. He's <laughs> all about the adrenaline and that's why he's set up and in and almost insurmountable challenge that no IWGP heavyweight champion has ever faced where he's going to have three title matches in less than a month with the match that he had uh, last Saturday against Yoda Suji, which was great. This match with Moxley and then resurgence next month. I do. They've definitely put a lot of intrigue behind this. Because like I, I initially dismissed it as like oh, Moxley's not gonna win this thing. Why? My my dismissal almost comes from if you're New Japan, you've already lost Osprey, you've already lost Okada to this company. Now you're gonna put your world title on someone in this company. Like what? What are you getting out of all of this? I mean, maybe it means more Moxley appearances in New Japan, but like you can already hopefully have yeah, some Moxley yeah. appearances in New Japan. Just like you gotta, at some point, you gotta stand up to AEW and be like, "Hey, we're not splitting these production costs with Forbidden Door." But at some point, you gotta just be like, eh, "Our guys gotta like win. We can't lose two of our biggest stars. Three, really? You go back to Jay White. Yeah, lost him three as well. Like." Can't just be like, yeah, we're losing some of our biggest stars over here. And like you, you, all you have right now is is Naito. You're trying to make Suji. He's getting there. Shota. I mean, He's, look, maybe yeah, Moxley drops the title to Shota. I don't know. I, I think that that's a long-term thing. I think we're yeah. leading to Shota winning the G1 this year, but they had to knock him down before they're going to build him back up, which is regular Gato New Japan booking with his losses to, you know, evil for the never title. And then to Jack Perry in the new Japan cup. I think that he's going to be Jack Perry tonight in Chicago. And then he's going to keep, he's going to pick up some more wins as he heads into the G1 climax this summer. And I think he's going to win the G1 is, I think it's probably going to be Shota versus Naito at next year's Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah, I, I still think Naito's going to win. There is something very intriguing, though, about Moxley winning, becoming, I ain't calling him the global whatever, winning all the, the titles, and then holding it until possibly Forbidden Door, dropping it back to Naito at that point. I think there is something intriguing about that. But again, if I'm New Japan, I've already taken some L's by losing some talent to AEW this year. I'd probably I'd look a little look they're sometimes they're not doing themselves any favors though. Like they they have David Finley get this big victory over Osprey and Moxley in the triple threat, and it's like, oh, now you're just gonna lose the title to Nick Nemeth. Like you gotta get you gotta at some point help yourself too. Like if you're just gonna continue to be like, yeah, Nick Nemeth, we're just gonna put the title on him when you have David Finley there to you can establish him with this title after beating Moxley and Osprey. You got to just be like, hey, we're going to roll with Finley, not put the title on Nick Nemeth. You got to stay. You got to at some point just put a foot down. And especially now that they're doing the whole um, LIJ versus Bullet Club War Dogs as their main like stable feud, it would work better with the promo that David Finley cut against Yoda Suji if Suji was going against the global heavyweight champion, David Finley. And then it could lead to Suji getting a big title win. That would have worked better for me. I agree with you. 
like the moves of putting two titles on Matt Riddle and uh, Nick Nemeth on the same show, like those Sapporo shows might be my, my least favorite shows that I've ever seen from New Japan. Like I hated those Sapporo shows. That those those two title changes back to back follow some awful matches with Evil and Shoto Amino, and then Sto winning the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship by count out. Like it was just a bad show in Sapporo. So, but like Nick Nemeth, you can make that good, but I'm, I don't think they're making the steps to do that because I feel like tonight's matchup with Tomohiro Ishii should be for the Global Heavyweight Championship. It feels like they are missing out on that opportunity because he wants his first match against a New Japan talent for the Global Heavyweight Championship to be uh, against Hiroshi Tanahashi. But you can't wait. You can't wait for these type of things. Yeah, I don't know when Tanahashi's going to be back either. Yeah. He's he's out with injury right now. Yeah, I don't think Ishii's going to beat Nemeth. So no. you might as well just put it the It should be a title on. match. Yeah. yeah. Uh, maybe Ishii will beat Nemeth, and then they'll set up the the title match. It's an eliminator match. SB three. I think doing I, that. No, no, they didn't say that. Just said it's not. Well, I know, but I'm saying they're doing that on Battle of the Belts tomorrow. Just an eliminator match. The champions in a match at Battle of the Belts, but it's an eliminator match for some reason. That, does, that doesn't make any sense at all. But I, I'm not gonna say anything about it. As far as Nemeth and Ishii, I think this is a real test for Nemeth. Because I I've like I like the introduction at Wrestle Kingdom, I've liked the introduction at TNA Hard to Kill. I think that he's been doing good stuff as kind of being the the new like uh, baby face, top baby face in the company. And I know he's been feuding with Moose and the system, so that's been good. And he's been teaming up with like Speedball and stuff. He had a really good matchup with Alex Shelley two weeks ago. But I. I haven't seen the great Nemeth match that's going to be like, everybody going to be like, oh man, you need to see that Nemeth match. The Shelly match was good. Macklin match was good. The Finley match was good. But you can't just have good matches. <laughs> You've got to have to have that great match. If you're if that's what you're going to New Japan and TNA is to have all these great matches, you need to have one of them. And Ishii feels like his first big chance to have that great match. Ryan says Mox wins the title was to Okada at Collision. Okada Naito at Forbidden Door for the title. But Okada's not gonna take Okada's not taking that L. Okada's Okada, gonna be like <laughs> No, Okada don't want that title. What are you talking about? Okada purposely <laughs> just won the AEW Continental <laughs> title because he did not want the Continental Crown because it included an NJPW title. <laughs> Okada's just holding the title and like, yeah. Went to another company just to win the same title I've won a hundred times. Good for me. Just faces Naito again. Just like, yeah. Here we are again, buddy. Okada's like, nope, not losing. Sorry. Okada don't Somebody else has got to come take this title from me. Okada's like, I never want to face Naito and Tanahashi again. I will team <laughs> up with them, but I will never face them again. <laughs> Okada not doing any jobs on his way out pops me so much. He's just like, yeah, beating all these dudes. Sorry about it. That was like the most anti climatic exit for a top star I've ever seen from New Japan. That was that, that was almost as crazy as the as the Nakamura exit, but at least with Nakamura, they fit in his farewell on a Kurgan Hall show. Like and like they made that a little bit special with like a tag team match where you got to team up with Okada and Chaos, but like with Okada, it felt so anticlimactic. It's like, yep, we're doing eight man tags, both yeah. from the last shows. Yep. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do the Tanahashi match, his third to last show. Yep. Eight man tags beating all these dorks anyway. All these six man titles, yeah, just, just drop them. Just We're gonna do that. Him. We're gonna do that on a road too, Joe Jeremy. <laughs> they did that. That's that final never open weight six man, the greatest title run in that title's history. They did the final match on a road two show. You don't know they how couldn't upset even that like, I was. I had to wake up for a road two show. There was two other people in that match. Like Tanahashi's taking plenty of L's. Ishii takes an L every show, and it's still like nah. Okada, he's not even being associated with losers. He's Okada has a natural allegiance to winners. All right, he ain't, he has no unnatural allegiance to losers. He wasn't doing it. Bless him. I, 
I always thought Okada was like good with like body language and facial expressions, but coming to America and coming to AEW has unlocked like another level. Like I feel like he is like Mount Rushmore, top three all time facial expression. Just the little things like he did with the squash match this week when he hits the air raid crash and he leans against the ropes and he's like, <laughs> just like he's so annoyed. He's so annoyed. He has to wrestle, but he's like, I'm bored. I'm also bored. Okada rules. They got to get him in the title picture sooner rather than later. That, that I, I know he's got the continental title, but he should he's he should be yeah he should be up there for the for the world title. He should be up there for it. <sighs> Nothing announced really for SmackDown outside of Cody and Bailey are going to be on the show. Are we going to get uh well, okay, let, let's talk about Cody for a second. What do you think? Obviously, the Rock feud is down the line. What do you think is next for Cody? Or by next, I mean now. You know, they tried to call me crazy, Jeremy, when I said in February that we were doing Rock and Cody next year at WrestleMania. And they're doing Rock and Roman at 42. I think I came on this show and I said the same thing. But I think right after the tag team match was made, I said that. That's the plan. That's what they're doing. As far as right now, it's interesting that, you know, he has this appearance on SmackDown because you would think that they are going to start his program for at least a backlash here. But when you look at the SmackDown landscape, I think like the people that make the most sense is like a Randy Orton or AJ Styles. If you if you want to do like the big shock and big angle, you could do Randy Orton turning heel and turning on Cody. You could do like a tag team match with them versus A Town Down Under in the main event, and then Orton turns on Cody uh, after they win the matchup. And then, or you could do you know AJ Styles being bitter that he lost at WrestleMania, and he has to, and he attacks the new champion to get himself to the front of the line. I would feel like the right guys right now on the SmackDown roster. I would have preferred if AJ had won at Mania. To, yeah. But the I, I get the story of, oh, AJ. I mean, that's how LA Knight got his spot, right? AJ got hurt. So LA Knight just stepped in, took his spot. So now AJ can just attack Cody and be like, this is all I got to do. I just attack you and take it. And if I'm LA Knight, I'm probably inserting myself and be like, look, dude, I beat you. At Mania, I would like a little bit more care on the the wins and losses. Yeah, they could do the follow up, and that could be like his number one contendership of how he uh, how he gets the matchup with Cody at uh, at Backlash. Randy Orton turning is an easy play. Maybe too early for that play, though. I feel might like be. you might hold that one off. Um, so that's the only reason I. I don't go that fe- quite. That feels one. like the SummerSlam program. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't feel like a WrestleMania or WrestleMania backlash. They called it that one time. They, uh, but the, uh, yeah, they, they called it that like 2021 and was it 2022? Yeah. That was the, uh, wasn't that Orton and Edge? Wasn't that greatest match of all time? Wasn't that WrestleMania, that WrestleMania backlash? backlash? I think or so. was it backlash? I'm not yeah. sure. I'm not okay. sure if that was. I know that. Yeah. That was 2020. Yeah. 2021 was, uh, I think. Claudio and uh, Roman was the main event. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, the rest of SmackDown, it's been so Roman Reigns heavy for the past few years that he's been, you know, the top heel and really the only heel that feels like he's gotten any real traction. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to think of another heel on SmackDown. They're doing the draft in a couple of weeks. Yeah. That's going to kind of shake things up a little bit. There's got to be like an obvious heel on SmackDown. We're just completely missing here. So is Cody going to be on both shows now, though? I think so. I mean, his schedule is that way. I think he said he wants it that way. Maybe once the draft happens, they will differentiate of like, hey, no, you're only going to be on this show. And then Priest will be on the other show. But until then, now the draft is in a couple of weeks. Until then, I do think that they will keep it Cody on both shows. Because I think I think they're swapping world titles. I think Cody's going to be on Raw after the draft. I think so too. And I, 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 I think I think Judgment Day, the entire Judgment Day, will be on SmackDown, and they'll move Bailey over to Raw. I could see that. I could see that. 
I'm trying to look at the roster of SmackDown heels, which again, I, there's, I there, I, I've seen some people mention Carry and Cross, but <laughs> that's another instant of what we're of what we're talking about. Of you need to get a win, a credibility building win before you do that. But WWE and they and I feel like that would be defining this dub this new undisputed WWE title reign of his first feud was Carry. Ew. Yeah, you. I, I'm just disgusted even saying that. You got to get somebody in there who, uh, you know, matters. What if it's Sheamus? They advertise Sheamus coming back. What I, if Sheamus comes in and just kicks his head off tonight? I I would like that, even though my idea was for Sheamus to come back and attack Sammy and go after the okay. Intercontinental. Yeah, yeah, that makes more sense to me because he his whole thing was go after the Intercontinental title. Uh, Lashley does not work because we they proved that what last year when they tried to turn Lashley heel, it doesn't work. The fans want to cheer Lashley, but they don't. I don't feel like they have the intention of pushing Lashley. I don't think so either. I mean, it feels like they could have done more with Lashley and Street Profits just all year last year, and then you know they put him in the feud with Cross and the the Crossers. The I forget I forget their name, but what's their name? Uh, the final testament. The TikTok, right? The TikTokers. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna need y'all to to stop, stop bringing us down the steps. Like we, we started this, we started the the potential Cody challengers at Randy Orton and AJ Styles. Y'all have brought us down to Miz, Karrion Cross, Baron Corbin. I feel like we're going down. And we ain't on Baron Corbin. Baron but, Corbin but, did some work. No, no, he he he's awesome. But I feel like y'all are y'all are not going like on the same level as us. Okay, so y'all are going down the tiers of the WWE roster when Cody needs to be up up here. He needs to have someone of a certain level, maybe a former champion. That that's what I've suggested or in our styles because a former champion is probably what or, what Cody needs as his first round. Well, what if they debut? Jacob Fatu or Tamataka tonight. I think I think that would be fun, but I don't think that you want to do. The, do you want to continue the bloodline in Cody right now? Because who can. would be the challenger then? Solo. Well, I don't. I don't know about solo. Like. Don't know. Or are you going to introduce like Jacob Fatu as the main uh, as the main eventer, and he gets the shot? Hey, you can have Jacob Fatu come in and just completely destroy Cody. Yeah, I can see that. I, I'm I'm really interested in if they're going to introduce Jacob Fatu and Tamatanga as a tag team because I feel like that would probably be their best chance to be successful right from the jump on SmackDown or Raw as a tag team. Yeah. Mm. Tom, Tom, I feel like Tama is was good as a babyface, you know, in New Japan the last couple of years. And, of course, he's always been a great heel. But his best times is when he's in a group, when he's in a tag team. Jacob Fatu, I, I, yeah, he has potential to be a star on his own and maybe can even get up to the main event level in WWE based on talent. But I feel like the best bet to initially introduce him is him as a duo. See, I think Jacob Fatsu is better than Solo, and I think you yeah. can. Yeah, you, you and and, and that's why and that's why you want to put him in a tag team because it's it's gonna if you you will have you will take some of the attention off the fact that yes he will come in and he's initially better than Solo. You want to keep Solo on his own, so he's the tribal heir. He's holding down things for Roman and and Rock while they're gone. Uh, I mean, they got to do something with Solo. Then they've neutered him since. Yes, they have. Yeah, they, they've got to at least pull him back in there and, and do something like they got to build him back up and quickly if, if they're going to go back to solo as tribal air type of thing. I don't even know if like, you know, that was the big point of, oh, he's got the we'll follow everything. What's Roman thinking? And then Rock came in and was like, gives a shit about all that. I'm the fucking final boss. I care what your dumb story was. <laughs> So, so when do you think Rock's gonna send the order to turn for the bloodline to turn on Roman? Do you think it happens in the bit in the year that we have until Rock and Cody, or do you think that they start that after next year's WrestleMania? I think it's gonna be a while because Roman's gonna come back at some point, and obviously the Seth feud is going to be the the big thing. Yeah. And I think they're Roman... doing that at forty one. I think that's Roman's match at forty one. 
So Roman's got to. Uh, Roman's most likely got to be the heel for that. Even though, I mean, Seth was the started all this by being the heel. You know, I think Roman's got to be the heel for that feud of, you know, you lost your way out of all of this and became, you turned into this. And Roman's, of course, like, you turned me into this. I think Seth will continue to babyface throughout all of this. So I don't think you can, because when the bloodline turns heel or when the bloodline turns on Roman, that's going to effectively make Roman the baby face and rock continues to be the heel. See, I'm not certain though that rock is going to, let's say it is rock and Roman at 42. I'm not certain rock wants to remain final boss heel that entire time. I think, look, he clearly had a lot of fun with it leading up to 40. He, if he's going to wrestle Cody at 41, he's going to be the heel. I think rock wants the joy and the adulation of being a baby face at I some don't. point. I don't, you don't, I think I think that he got it. He got it for 10 years, basically. And it he's having more fun as the heel. So I think that the plan, if he's doing three WrestleManias back to back to back, he's going to be the heel for all of them. He's the top heel now of WWE. He faced Cody next year. He faced Roman after that. And I think that this whole thing may baby face Roman because I was at that WrestleMania, that Raw after WrestleMania seven years ago where FU Roman chants rang out through Orlando to see seven years later on the Raw after WrestleMania. Thank you, Roman chants. This could be the whole title reign, the whole story being completed for Cody could be the vehicle to start the slow burn to the Roman Reigns babyface run where Roman can finally appreciate the adulation of the fans and the fans can actually appreciate Roman Reigns. Yeah, but I think you got to do Rollins and Reigns with Reigns. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that. no, no, no. I agree. I agree with you there. I think okay. that that match is the vehicle to fully put it into motion. He's a babyface now. He's going to finally let go of the past because he finally beat Seth at WrestleMania. Yeah, I think he could beat Seth. Maybe they share like a handshake afterwards. No. And then. No. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I'm fill, 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 no. sorry. Um, <laughs> and then Raw after Mania next year, Rock gives the order to turn on Roman. And that fully makes Roman a baby face. And of course, the reasoning is like, you know, you've, you've lost sight of everything. You know, you did the fist bump with Seth. Rock should also beat Cody next year at WrestleMania, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that would be hilarious that would be so because then rock, you know then rock has the talking point of like you lost the cody you nearly destroyed the blood well, he's, he's he's already got that talking point i know but you know if cody beats rock next year at mania and wins the title then they're they're both just losers to cody no it's That's gonna be where... because of back-to-back -back years roman misses the spear and hits the rock but this time, oh. he's the reason why Rock loses to Cody at WrestleMania. Nah, I like Rock. I like Rock winning the title instead. Of course you do. You just want to make uh, uh, Jensen's life a living hell. Cody got his win. He got his win. What, what more I, do you I, want? I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, um, I'm not too sure what the big match is after Rock for Cody, though. What is the Oh, for Mania match? next year? Yeah, for like 42 because 42 i already got booked in i already got penciled in on my little chart roman and rock at 42 which is possible you know they, that's still two years down the line like yeah. it's lot nice to pencil lot, yeah. injuries can happen yeah right it's nice to pencil this stuff in but you know, look how much wrestling landscape has changed in the last eight months much less two years like who knows what's gonna happen two years from now you still got to factor in punk you're still gonna have to if he's healthy you're gonna still have to factor in whatever drew is doing you don't know who from aew becomes a free agent and it is like you know what i'm gonna go over here you don't know who from wwe becomes a free agent is like you know what i'm gonna go over here and so you got to factor in a lot of different stuff before like it's nice to pencil in cody and rock next year rock and roman two years down the line but a lot of stuff can change between those two the, the, in the next two years with that. Well, the, well I'm, thankfully, I'm a long gamer. I'm a long gamer like my good friend Dwayne. I saw the vision. I saw Dwayne's vision. He wants to do the biggest back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back WrestleManias ever. He came back 
for three back-to-back WrestleManias. He hosted one, faced Cena at two of them. This time, he's doing it bigger and better. The biggest tag team match of all time, and he wins on night one, guest appearance on night two. What did he get, like? Nine million dollars worth of shares. Oh yeah. yeah. So Jesus, what a payday. I was this like, was this was very interesting to me because he joined the board in late January. And then it was in the contract then when he joined of like, hey, these are being held until you fulfill certain obligations. And clearly the mania. So in January, they obviously had the idea that he was doing something at wrestlemania to fulfill the obligation to where he got these shares there's still another like held share portion for him that he does not have yet he's still got to fulfill some type of obligations to get those shares as well and maybe that is the the next year wrestlemania yeah i think i think that's i think that's what they have like really kind of con- constructed but we never know what to, how the fans are going to change everything, how injuries could change anything. Shout outs to Drew in the chat. See Drew in the chat doing his thing. But you're bugging if you think <laughs> if you think it's a good idea to do Rock and Roman. The latest Survivor. Rock is not working any show outside of Saudi that's not WrestleMania. I don't like, like, are you, and I don't, yeah, I don't think so either. <laughs> like, that's not I, like, like, I like, thought people like, were. I thought people were crazy when the elimination chamber. I was like, "Y'all are that." That was that was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. Like I, I oh. was like, I was like, I I like went on a whole campaign about that. I don't even want to revisit that. That was too silly. They're not going to do that match at five a.m. in the morning in the U.S. They're not going to do Rock and Roman there. It just wasn't going to happen. You know, SummerSlam is SummerSlam's in Cleveland. I don't know if the Rocks going to work Cleveland. I don't know where Survivor Series. Is, is going to be held if that's going to be in a stadium you know typically they go arena not stadium for that but look if you got the rock you probably want to go stadium over arena yeah but i and the, and the big and the big match at survivor series is war games so he's not gonna he's not gonna be in war games you're not gonna do rock and cody at war games because war games is the focus and it doesn't if you put that it doesn't make sense to do that match on that show because the focus is war games just like it didn't make sense to do Rock and Roman at Elimination Chamber because the focus is the Elimination Chamber. They're not going to do it at the Royal Rumble because the focus is the Royal Rumble. Like, we, I'm, I'm just going to eliminate all these different options for y'all until y'all figure it out. They're facing that next year's WrestleMania if The Rock is healthy enough to do it. It all comes down to The Rock's schedule and his, and his health. Like, he's got a busy year with everything he's doing this year. He's about to do the Smashing Machine. I don't know how long that's going to take. You know, it's a, it's not a cookie cutter role like we're we're used to from The Rock. He's got Moana stuff to do. I'm sure he's got a bunch of other obligations. You know, John Cena, he had stuff to do all year. That's why he had to get his one match in for Raw because he's not going to be around the rest of the year. You got to factor Rock, in. Rock will be back in January. That's probably when we'll see him again, or he'll make a guest appearance. He'll make an appearance. You know him. He loves to pop up. If he's in the area and they're in the area, he'll pop up. But as far as like him being back like he was during the Mania build, I don't see that until January. I I also think you do have to factor in John Cena. Like Cena said after Christmas, he'd like to come back. And then he even said like for kind of maybe one more final run. I don't know what that looks like, what Cena wants to do for his final run. But I do think the, the chase of the 17 title is kind of appealing and it's a pretty easy story to tell. I think you got to factor in Cena and you got to factor in just other people who could become available around that time. So it's good to pencil this stuff in. No, I factor in punk. Now, well, because he's, he wasn't on lat, he wasn't on this year's WrestleMania. So you got to factor him for next year's WrestleMania. There's a lot I mean, of, there's a lot of moving parts. You would hope to factor him in. Yeah, you would hope, you know, man's uh track record with the injuries and great here you got to factor in jack perry when he signs with the yes, wwe got to factor in hook ricky yeah. starks ricky yeah. starks yeah. mjf he's a free agent he could show up at any point okay now we're just talking about stand and deliver let's let's relax let's focus on wrestlemania here guys <laughs> MJF and the crowd that stand and deliver <laughs> God. with his with his with the scarf the scarf yeah so waving he's doing this little wave to the crowd to everybody <laughs> I 
They should sing his song when they see him. Da 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 da. I mean, Def Rebel can't mess that thing up any worse than it already is, I guess. No. I'm, I'm disappointed that, that Cena is not going to be back until after Christmas because I did want to see Cena and Logan Paul sometime this year. But maybe that's next year's WrestleMania. Yeah, maybe that's for, for next year. Look, I'd, I'd factor in Logan Paul to all of this too because he's, he's not full-time, full-time, but he's pretty close to it. And clearly, you know, they're, they're utilizing him and they're yeah. doing... I'd factor in whatever big streamer there is out there to do something. Whatever the hell they can get in get for next year. We don't have an announcement for next year's mania. The assumption's Minnesota. But. Yeah. That's crazy. This is like the latest they've left it, right? They usually always uh, announce it but well uh, at least yeah. before the latest mania was over. Yeah, you usually get a year in advance. Yeah. For the for the this string of shows, it was like all two, three years in advance because COVID kind of yeah. mess things up it'll be well, indoors well, next well, year actually yeah they did that big announcement where they announced it was going to be tampa dallas california and then last year's wrestlemania they ran the ad for philly yeah that but that apparently that deal was signed even before nick Khan joined sure. when nick Khan joined in 2020 because nick Khan was like yeah don't blame me for the show being outside in philadelphia in april that was signed before i got here Nikon's like, we ain't doing this outdoor shit in a cold city anymore. If we're going to Minnesota, indoor stadium. Maybe we'll go to Florida in April because it's nice. Maybe we'll go to California in April because it's nice. We ain't going I, outdoors at a stadium. I think 42 will be ca- will be Vegas. Okay. okay. Where it all started, where Rock and Roman started, it ends in Vegas. Uh, somebody in chat says we ever getting the mania doc they lied about. Apparently, uh, they had a lot of footage, and so they have to cobble it all together and put it out there. I it was very odd to me that like you know it was like Saturday after mania. They're like Wednesday, here this comes. And I'm yeah, like, I was like, this is a quick like, turnaround wow. for this. I was like, they usually wait like a whole year. Yeah, before they give us the twenty four special on them. I was like, y'all are putting together a real quick turnaround. Then they realized, oh, shit, you know what? Maybe we do have too much footage and we can't turn this around in the time we thought we were going to be able to. They're like, hold up. On, uh, on second thought, um, no. <laughs> they, yeah, they, 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 wait. they said, on second thought, yeah. no. <laughs> they made a mistake being like Wednesday. They should have just been like coming soon. Yes. And then as they figured it out, do... Uh, then give us an actual date but yeah they they kind of made a mistake being like hey wednesday this is coming out and then never never came out it's not triple h's fault though he's only no. responsible for the good things not absolutely things. he only saves things the triple h era the paul lebeck era this That's man there. is the only man that can ship us through chaos He's the only man that can save professional wrestling and book well because he's an he actually has knowledge of stuff and he's all about the grind. He is. He is. Triple H saved wrestling. I did like. I'm so thankful. Uh, you have to be thankful. You know, Cody would not have won if it wasn't for Triple H. Cody there didn't. Be a, there wouldn't be an AEW if it wasn't for Triple H. Yeah. I mean, it's true. Mm-hmm. It's all true. They, they wouldn't be doing this kind of footage stuff if it wasn't for Triple H. He invented that. Yeah. He invented that with uh, Q, uh, GTV. <laughs> he invented it with uh, Michaels when they showed the uh, cl- curtain call footage yep. to no reaction. Who is that? But they were smart to do commentary over it. See? They were. See? <sighs> Yes. Thank you, Triple H, for all that we have in the world of professional wrestling. Without you, the show wouldn't exist. Either. Did you did you announce to the people uh, watching on In the Weeds on Monday, Wednesday, or even at any point today that this is a new era of In the Weeds? I didn't realize it was. It's I mean, it's, Joel, it's a new it's a new era in everything wrestling, especially in the weeds. In the weeds, it's a new era. We're in the Jeremy Lambert era 
of in the weeds. That's always this has always been my era. No, 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 no. I know you I know you've been doing this show for a year and a half. I know you've been in control for a year and a half, Jeremy, but we have to announce it. I haven't it's been doing a this show for a year. Era. A new era. I haven't been doing this show for a year. We haven't done no, the show for a no. year. No, oh, I'm sorry. I confused you with somebody else. It's almost else. a year. I, you, I confused you with somebody else that was no. doing a job for a year and a half, and then they finally just said it was a new era. <laughs> uh, but you've been doing this show for a while. And we're just going to announce it's a new era. Sure. New era for In the Weeds. SP3 will be here for the continued portion of the new era. Uh, you can expect SP3 on Monday. Maybe on Wednesday. Um, Joel is taking care of personal stuff. Uh, we wish him well with everything. So maybe Triple H will buy the Piss Ant t-shirt company and use the footage for something i don't know and, th and thank you triple h for mentioning them because if it wasn't for him they wouldn't have know. got the tv deal because what did that happen that happened april 2019 yeah. they announced the tv deal may see? 2019 see i'm just saying it's a new era paul levette era i i do like that he might actually do like a lot of stuff that we like because he just wants the praise for it. He's just gonna be like, "Oh shit, you know, I'm getting praised for this." Yeah, I'll definitely do that. People are gonna praise me. Yeah, we're definitely gonna go. We're definitely gonna do that. So we, maybe we, he's gonna start listening to the fans. You know, they've always said they're gonna always listen to the fans. They listen to the audience. Now it's gonna really happen. Not because they actually care what we want. Because Triple H is like, praise me. I've listened. Please tell me what a great listener I am. Stephanie always says I, I'm a great listener. But you guys, <laughs> you guys also tell me that. It was funny in the press conference. Like, how good did my wife look? <laughs> He's like, it's glad to have her home. I get her at home all the time. Will Ospreay. How good did your wife look? Congrats. Congrats on your good looking wife. Triple H should come out on Raw with a, with a bazooka again. It's not the DX. He's like, I hear people got machine guns. Well, I got a bazooka. <laughs> that would be the perfect clapback. Perfect clapback. Yes, we are the authority. Finally, we are the authority. It, it took Yo, us long enough. For real, though. The, for real, though. I will give them credit. Because they did wait a year and a half before they started saying it was a new era. Because I had PTSD from all the other times they told me it was a new era. It was a new era when we were the authority at the end of 2018. It was a new era when Stephanie and Shane had took over Raw and SmackDown before we got the, the draft in 2016. Uh, what other what other new eras that we have? It was a new era when Brian Danielson won the won the Undisputed. WWE World Heavyweight Championship. So I, I, had, I had PTSD of past new eras that I needed a full year of Triple H to be like, you know what? I actually believe y'all. Get ready for more new era tonight on SmackDown. Bailey and Cody. They're just up there the whole show, just bullshitting for two hours. Um, I think that Bailey, they should probably either continue the program with damage control or tiffany stratton stratton makes a lot of sense Stratton makes a lot of sense it's tough damage control it's tough because they lost so it's like ah you're gonna come out here and like continue this um but stratton does make a lot of sense and i hope i hope that it's just uh it's just bailey and cody just have some couches in the middle of the ring oh the ding dong hello bring that shit back they're just chilling in the middle of the ring, just like, good night on Sunday. Yeah, it was a great night on Sunday. Bailey's like, I was backstage with your wife, Brandy, during the match. She was so nervous. Cody's like, thank you for taking care of her. She said you were, you were very kind, and you reassured her, and you calmed her down. He's like, I was so happy for you to, to win. You know, Could have let me have my moment a little bit, but I, you know, it was so great. It was so great that you won. And Cody's like, we both finished our story. It was fantastic. And Bailey's like, hey, remember when you said I was like fake nice to put over Kylie Ray? Cody's like, ah, that was just a Cody lie. You know, I never said 
or said those things. I think you're great. It's, it's okay. It's all water under the bridge. We won't release that footage. That's that's the whole segment. Two hours. I'm just riffing. It's just like, look at us. Look at us. Yeah. Look at us. <laughs> all right, SP3. We're going to get out of here. Let everybody know where they can find you at. You can find me at True Hill SP3 on the Twitter machine. Uh, you can go over to the True Hill Heat YouTube channel. That is where you can usually find me. I will be live tomorrow, 11.05 a.m. Eastern time with the True Hill Heat flagship podcast. Myself, Miss Chrissy Love, True Draw Josh talking about this week in wrestling. Yes, we will discuss the footage from all in CM Punk, uh, Jack Perry, do some predictions for uh, some Whatever shows we got this weekend, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 been Battle a of the Belts SP3. Battle of the How can you forget Battle why, why of the Belts? Why would I belt? do predictions for Battle of the Belts? If they don't care, I'm not going to care. But yes, join us for that the flagship podcast tomorrow 11:05 a.m. Eastern time and today on the True Hill Heat uh YouTube channel, we got our new interview with TNA star Rich Swan, so check that out. Nice. There you go. All right, everybody, uh, we have a new episode of Coexisting at 3 p.m. Eastern here on this channel with Rob and Maggie. Everyone can check that out. Tune in live, support Rob and Maggie and all they do. That's Coexisting 3 p.m. Eastern right here, FightfulOverbooked.com. Uh, this weekend should have a new episode of Wrestling Made Me Cry um, with uh, with Kylie and Auntie Collins. That's at 12 noon Eastern on Sunday Wrestling made me cry. Everyone check that out. There's a new episode of New Japan Bread Club up right now. A uh, new episode of Indeed up right now. Uh, the interviews that we've cut, the Mustafa Ali interview is cut. The interview we have with Matt Mikowski will be getting cut here shortly. You can watch the spotlight from yesterday. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff. Just like watch. Oh. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. It was a long weekend last week. You know, if you need to get away from wrestling this week, I completely understand. Or, you know, watch New Japan tonight and Battle of the Belts tomorrow and all that fun stuff. SP3 will most likely be back on Monday, possibly Wednesday as well. FMC should return. Oh, there's a the new episode of Fight for Film Club is dropping tomorrow. Hey, well. Al, I believe- to answer Power Driver Finisher in the chat, we got an X-Men 97 review on Sunday on True Hill Heat Sports and Entertainment. There you go. Uh, Five of Film Club tomorrow with Akira. That's uh, Rob and Gisberto. Really fun stuff as they talk with wrestlers and review movies nice. with wrestlers. Um, so you guys can check that out. Um, FMC will be back on Tuesday. We'll have playoffs. Play in. Playoff play in to talk about challenge. I got to catch up on that. Um, I do want to talk. I know you're doing your review on True Hill Heat. We'll talk X-Men 97 on that show as well. Oh, back. Because I, I, yeah. I will have thoughts myself. I will, I'll definitely be caught up by by then and uh of course basketball playoff time is about here unfortunately or fun this time of the year go you lakers eight, you you get that eight seed you know who that one seed is Good hey luck. hey hey we we gotta get the ac to finish out the season so we have a chance at seven <laughs> we should have a chance at seven we, yeah, we gotta you, do you want season. seven not eight because you don't want eight because the one seed's pretty locked in right now so uh, we'll see we shall see all right everybody thanks for thanks for listening thanks for the support talk to you later on